Hello everyone, welcome back. I was asked today, I was doing a talk last week uh, regarding the uh, 12 spiritual steps that uh, many, many organisations use throughout the world and individuals. It's used by millions and millions of people to help them recover for the, the damage uh, <coughs> that our thinking and behaviours had done to us throughout our, throughout our lives, basically, where a lot of people end up uh, caught up with addictions and all different types of addictions, uh, mostly people. But I was speaking about my understanding of the, the 12 steps, uh, and this is not to promote any fellowship, uh, this is to help give people an understanding, a spiritual understanding of the 12 spiritual steps and the, the benefit of them. Uh, it took me a long, long, long time to really grasp them and understand the power that lies behind them. Uh, and what can be achieved through them, through understanding them, through understanding ourselves. And the uh, 12 steps to my understanding are originated from St Ignatius Loyola, uh, who done a lot of writings and teachings, very, very spiritual man, he was the founder of the, the Jesuit priesthood, who are the most uh, educated people in the land supposed to be, uh, very, very educated, very spiritual people. Uh, and I think Bill and Bob from uh, Alcoholics Anonymous took these steps and and wrote them the way they're written today. Uh, very, very powerful steps. Uh, I used them instead of going for counselling. Uh, I felt that to take a really, really good look at myself, uh, I had to understand these steps. And I saw that the spiritual uh, behind it, the spirituality behind it, and seeing the damage that I'd done to my own spirit, believing First of all, I had to believe that I was a spiritual person, which I have done through my own experiences, a, a prayer and meditation, which I'll go into later on. But, uh, to see where I disconnected myself from the spirit, through what I'd learned as a child, and, and coming in and, and, and grabbing a hold of these 12 steps would give me an understanding of myself and the damage that I've done to myself, and the damage I was doing to other people through my thinking and my behaviours and my tongue, uh, the things that I was saying. So these 12 steps, the first step is we admitted that we were powerless, powerless over our addictions uh, and our lives had became unmanageable. My life, I had to admit that I was powerless over people, uh, places, things and situations. Uh, I'm going to try to take power. Uh, my life became unmanageable when I was trying to control, fix uh, or abuse my power that I had not been given. My life became unmanageable because I hadn't accepted that I had no power or control over another human being. I couldn't fix them. You can take a horse to the water but you can't make it drink. I couldn't change them. I could give them suggestions, support and help but I couldn't change them. And to have to accept that and when I was trying to change them and trying to fix them, especially family, People were seeing who are hurting, who are maybe caught up with addictions, uh, and we're trying to fix them. Uh, and we believe that's love, where we end up going in there to try and fix them, and we end up becoming really angry, upset, resentful, and hurt because we couldn't accept that we had no power over them. And that's the difficult part of being a human being. Uh, and learning that spirituality is completely different. And when I come on board to take up these steps, I found that step really, really difficult, the very first step, and you think, oh, that's okay, no problem, I'm powerless over people, places that I used to go to that I was frightened of, uh, that I would take drink and, and drugs uh, to give me confidence to get into these places, the situations that I kept putting myself in, because I wouldn't accept I had no power or control, I kept putting myself into dangerous situations because I was a people pleaser, and I was frightened of other people, I wanted them to like me and I wanted them to love me, uh, and I wanted their approval so much and that's what hurt me and that's what I had to and that's what took me into addiction was the fear of others uh, the drinks and the dr drugs and the other things that I took were a painkiller to kill the pain because of my thinking I couldn't stop my thinking uh, because I'd been conditioned that way within society what I'd learned in my home as a child I'd learned it, I listened to it, I watched it, I copied it it became normal in my home and in my environment and if you're brought up in a dysfunctional home the way I was, 
then <laughs> it's normal behaviour to think negatively, angry and resentful and be scared and worried. And that was step one to me, that I had no power or control over another human being, places, things and situations. I had no power or control over them and I had to accept that. And when I didn't accept it, my life was unmanageable. Coming to that acceptance gave me peace and contentment in step one that I had no power or control over people, places, things and situations. And to keep my own power, I had to accept that, that I had only power over me and my thinking. And that's what the 12 steps was there for me, was to show you the spiritual damage I'd done to myself through no acceptance and my life became unmanageable. And that was step one to me, was looking at the people, the places, the things and situations that I was scared of, frightened of, intimidated of, thought were better than me, frightened to go to places, they kept doing the same things repeatedly, the habits that I'd formed, that was step one to me. And, uh, and I found that very difficult to understand, it took me years and years to really understand the true meaning of that. Then I went on to step two, came to believe a power greater than myself could restore me to sanity, doesn't say would, it says came to believe a power greater than y yourself <coughs> could restore you to sanity. So step two, you think, okay, I've got a faith, I've got a belief, might have been brought up religiously, uh, did I know this power? Uh, because the God that I was brought up with, the God of my, uh, my understanding until now, was a uh, somebody else's God, my grand, my grandpas, my dads, my mums, people in my community, the priests, the ministers, the reverends, their understanding of their God where they taught me from a book uh, and I was a sinner and I was a bad person and I wasn't to do this and I wasn't to do that. Uh, and that was, that's not my experience of the God. So coming to believe in a power great myself could restore me to sanity, I had to find out the spirituality behind that, that I am spirit and the God lies within me uh, and further on in the steps, when you get to step 11 which I'll get into, uh, you learn to experience that through prayer and meditation. But coming to believe a power great in myself, I had to really understand because I expected the God of my understanding, the old God that I had, to do things for me because I'd heard other people saying this. Uh, hand over to God and God will do this for you and God will do that for you and that's not my understanding at all. Uh, my understanding is that God is within me because I'm a spiritual being having a human experience and to connect to that power. I, I, I couldn't connect to it because it, I was brought up with somebody else's God and I have no anger or I do not blame anybody. That was their experience of their God. My God is completely different. It's the God within me and that's what the 12 steps has shown me the damage I'd done to myself for separating myself from the spirit and living a human material life. And, and to connect to that spirit, I had to believe in a power greater than me could restore me to sanity. We're working with, with, with that power alongside and believing that power is within you, which is difficult because if you're brought up with somebody else's God. So again, I failed in that aspect because uh, it took me a long time to realise the God was within me and I was not separate from that God and that power lay within me and I had to come to believe that power could restore me to sanity when I understood that power's will which, <coughs> which took us into step three uh, but step, staying on step two just now it's like really believing really believing in yourself who you are and believing in the power that runs through you you can achieve anything in life and you can be restored back to sanity a sane frame of mind uh, because of the, the life that we have lived we, we just couldn't find peace, happiness, contentment and love uh, but it's only when I was getting my own way uh, I was in a loving uh, place and I felt good about myself when things didn't go I only reacted and dealt with them the way I knew how to so believing in myself and in that power greater than myself could restore me to sanity, I really had to find out who I was and, and find a wee bit more about spirituality and, and the divine spirit, the universe, the God of your understanding, whatever it may be, that he, she, what, uh, whatever, and believing and trusting in that power, uh, that power lies within you. And then going on to step three, uh, made a decision, made a decision, uh, finally deciding I've made a decision to turn my will and my life over 
to the care of that God as I understood him or whatever it may be. So making a decision, am I going to go on this path, the spiritual path, am I willing to make the sacrifices, uh, to give up my fear of other people and trust in this power that lies within me? Because I've now made a decision that I'm going to do that and turn my will, which is my thinking, be my beliefs, my reactions, and turning my, my will and my life over because I can't, I couldn't, couldn't run my life my way. Uh, I had to turn to a power greater than myself and ask for guidance and, and help and support uh, and teach me how to love. And, do, and in doing this, I found this step also very difficult but very rewarding. Uh, we're making this decision, right, okay, I'm going to hand my will and my life over to this the God of my understanding that I've got to know in step two. We're looking at my life in step one and seeing how unmanageable my life was. We tried to do it my way, uh, Jerry's way, the only way I knew how, the only way I knew that I'd learned. So I've made a decision in, in step three, I'm going to turn my will and my life over, which is very, very difficult because I kept taking my will back every day because of these habits that I'd formed, how I, f how I was thinking, how I was reacting, how I was behaving. And in doing that, I decided I can't do this, so I can't do it on my own. So I've made this decision that to turn my will and my life over to the care of God as I understood him. And in step two, I finally came to a <coughs> resolve that I trust in this power, because this power is within me. This power is truly within me. And I can achieve this when I learn to trust myself through trusting in a power greater than myself, because I never trusted myself. So. And making this decision, uh, it set me free, it gave me a bit of hope, I should say, a bit of hope. And then going into step four, made a searching, searching, fearless and moral inventory of ourselves. Taking a really, really, step four is a step that most people that I know, uh, and I've worked with thousands, step four is a step that most of us are frightened of because it's a step there, we have to admit, again, eh, the wrongs that we've done. So you, you made a, fear, a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. It's taking a cleaning the cup on the inside, as they say, go within or go without. For me, I'd done many step fours, eh, and I hadn't done a further step four. I hadn't really looked at myself with the, the true spiritual meaning. The step four is is cleansing yourself, uh, being able to look at the things that separated you from the spirit. That step four is very powerful in that sense, where it's really looking at your your whole life, a fearless, having no fear, because in step two and step three, you've already came to believe and you've handed your will and your life over. So you're ready now to do step four because you know that you are spirit and that this power is guiding you and going to help you cleanse yourself with revealing to you in step four the things that separated you from him or whatever it may be that power for me it was the God of my understanding the things that separated me was my behaviours my way of thinking my reactions uh, how I saw myself uh, how I perceived myself and how I perceived other people and how I perceived the God of my understanding uh, the fear that I had of other people. I saw in that fearless and moral inventory, uh, looking right at myself from my childhood, seeing my insecurities where I had learned to think uh, and react and behave. We were watching and listening within my home as a child, which I spoke about in other videos. Everything became normal to me. My family were thinking and acting and behaving the same way. My friends that I befriended in my community and environment were doing the same thing because like attract like. I saw why I stole. I saw why I became a people pleaser, uh, because I didn't love myself, I didn't like myself and I didn't know how to love. And I sought approval from other people. I wanted people to like me, I wanted people to love me. I saw, I saw why I lied, uh, my sexual conduct, uh, <clears throat> why I put sex before everything because it made me feel good. It was only f me feeling that made me feel good and wanting other people to love me. Because I didn't know how to love myself and in step four I saw this where I had learned everything, why I was so insecure uh, in my relationships with other people, why I was resentful 
angry, frightened, jealous, uh, and naive at times as well. But also, I saw my good points as well in step four. My higher power showed me this and revealed these, my strengths and my weaknesses uh, to help me. And not just step four, it's not just about looking at all the bad things I've done throughout my life. I was looking at patterns of behaviour, how I was reacting to certain things that was happening, people, places, things and situations. Again, all this was learned for step one and finding the courage and the confidence in step two and in step three we making decisions and coming to believe. It stood me in good step for step four. Yeah, and this time I done it right, where I had no fear because I believed and trusted and that power was with me. And I searched right in and I searched really right in to see why I was so horrible to myself and why I was nasty eh, to other people, why I humiliated people and laughed at them and the, the file, the venom that came from my tongue and how I could speak to people and it's because I hated myself, I didn't like myself eh, and I didn't like the way other people told me the truth, their truth, I, I didn't like that and it hurt me eh, and I got hurt so easily and I seen that in step four why I took everything so personal, eh, everything so personal what people would say and they'd only be speaking their mind or saying something I took it so personal where I would be hot and resentful and then my life was becoming unmanageable again uh, so step four really is, uh, is really taking a good look at myself and writing it down uh, pages and pages of it and to really get to know the person that I thought I was wasn't really that person because this is what I'd learned as a human being in a material world and step four revealed that to me that I wasn't a bad person, I'd learned this way in the 12 steps and believing and trusting in a power greater than myself could restore me back to sanity with being honest enough and willing enough to, to look at myself eh, in the shame and the guilt and not be frightened of that shame and guilt anymore because I was frightened of the shame and guilt and I wouldn't go into certain things in my life and wouldn't even look at them because I didn't want to feel the shame and guilt and it was easier for me to blame other people than it was to take responsibility for that shame and guilt because it was my behaviours and my thinking and actions that was doing this and I seen that in step four yeah, and it revealed a lot of insecurities to, uh, insecurities to me yeah. and I've learnt, learnt through that step how insecure I really was and how frightened I was of other people and why I behaved the way I behaved and why I kept going in and out of relationships and couldn't hold a relationship down I've also seen a lot of strengths that I had. I was a loving, nice, kind-hearted person, but uh, couldn't be kind to myself and couldn't love myself. And in step five is when the trust really comes in. For for me, it basically for me it was step five is admitted to God, to ourselves, and another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Now in step four, I'd already written all this down. In step five now, it was a, a risk I was going to take to share all my secrets, my shames, my guilts, my behaviours, my remorse, eh, and my strengths with another human being eh, to pick someone that I, I believe I trusted in, someone that would listen to me, eh, wouldn't judge me, wouldn't criticise me, uh, on the things I was going to share because a lot of things I'd done were, were really awful and I hadn't ever shared them with anybody before but in believing and trusting in this power greater than myself and in and, and the first three steps and then in the fourth step being able to write this down and taking my time with it, there was no rush uh, taking as much time as I needed so I could do a further uh, moral inventory of myself and in step five to admit this to my God of my understanding and another human being and to myself the exact nature of my wrongs, uh, what happened in my childhood. And that was a freedom step for me, that was a step that really, really helped me immensely. Uh, was learning to take full ownership and responsibility for my wrongs uh, and admitting them to my God and the God of my understanding and another human being and being rid of that shame and guilt. The difficult part is in step five is when you have shared it and you've written it down in step four. That's a finish with now. We don't know if we've come on this spiritual path and that's what I had to remember about step five. Once I share this, 
this time round because I've done other ones before uh, and I hadn't done them right, I just didn't do them right. This time I was going to do it right. I wouldn't feel that shame and guilt anymore because I wasn't doing the things that I used to do. So why should I feel the way I used to feel? And I made sure of that in step step five at this time. When I share this, it's finished with now because I am not behaving that way anymore. I have saw why I'd done what I'd done. And I shared all this with another human being. And I spent a couple of two to three hours sharing my whole life, my experiences. Uh, and I felt a lift, they said, call it a weight coming off your shoulders. Well, that was a tremendous weight because there were secrets. And there's an old saying, secrets will keep you sick. These secrets did keep me sick. And when I revealed them, when they were revealed to me and, and I spoke them, uh, I felt a comfort, a connection. Uh, I felt no fear when I was sharing it. I felt the power within me, a calmness and a peace coming over me. And it was being rid of these old behaviours and starting to live a spiritual life. And that's what step five gave me, was taking that risk. And I moved on to step six. We're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. It took me a long time to understand that, even what defects of character was. But the defects <coughs> of character were the, the defects towards my spirit, the, the true character, the true spiritual person, and what I had learned and what I'd saw in step four and step five and had written down and spoke about <coughs> were revealed to me that my, the defects with the things that went against the spirit, the old behaviours, the old ways of thinking, and the old ways of, of behaving, and the old ways of reacting through my thoughts. Uh, and I was ready, we're, we're entirely ready, we're entirely ready to have God remove these. This is where the willingness and the honesty and the open-mindedness comes in. Uh, I was ready, I wasn't ready before, but this time I was ready. Uh, God had showed me we have to do this together. My God showed me we have to do this together. I'm not going to interfere in your life and remove all these things from you if you're going to continue behaving this way. So are you really ready to have these removed? Are you ready to continue on this path, the spiritual path? Uh, not to be a saint the way I wanted to be, uh, to have a, a, live a spiritual life and spirituality is a way of thinking, thinking spiritual, living spiritual and being spiritual. Just being, knowing who you are. Uh, and I was ready this time. I was ready. And I, and I asked God, my God, to, to help to remove these defects of character. The things that was disturbing my spirit. The things that was hurting me. And hurting my higher power. And hurting other people. And uh, I became aware of these defects. Because I'd already wrote them down in step four. Uh, and shared them in step five. And I became ready this time uh, in step six really ready because all the previous times I wasn't ready uh, I expected the God of my understanding to just remove these things from me but I kept behaving the same way for years and years but I told everybody that I'd done these steps and I was a spiritual person uh, and I hadn't then that's the joy it's no punishing yourself anymore uh, for not doing it right more will be revealed and more will be revealed and more will be revealed. And it's just continuously working on that. Uh, so this time I was ready. Uh, and ready for step six. Because step six, my defects of character was my thinking. That's what my defects was, my thinking. Uh, how I saw the bad in myself, how I saw the bad in other people. Why I judged and criticised and condemned other people through my thinking. Which damaged my spirit and I was damaging other people's spirit through my tongue uh, and why I was reacting to the voice that was coming in my head which was a defect it was damaging the soul and damaging the spirit and I wasn't taking responsibility for it because I didn't know it was a defect I thought it was normal for me to think that way uh, because I'd been doing it all my life but I'd noticed this in step four and step five and I was humbly ready now uh, because I knew it was going to be tough uh, not, not hard, I don't use the word hard I knew it was going to be difficult because uh, to change the way you think uh, and you've been thinking that way for a long, long time it's very, very difficult. Not hard, difficult. But each day you get stronger. So, 
That was me and entirely ready in step six. And in step seven, another step I was confused with, humbly asked him to remove my shortcomings. Again, I thought, that's me, I'm ready now. Uh, you can remove my shortcomings. Uh, you've removed my defects now, you can remove my shortcomings. And expecting, see, I didn't know this God. Uh, I expected so much from him and I got hurt and fell out with this God in my understanding that I thought I understood and blamed him when I couldn't blame anybody else and I'd lost that connection through this I didn't know what defects and shortcomings were my defects of character was my thinking my shortcomings was the actions that I took on these thoughts and why I reacted to these thoughts uh, it was shortcoming of me against damaging the spirit and damaging other people's spirit and then in step seven, the very first word is the, the word that I missed, humble, hum humbly asked him, humbly asked him. And I found out it had taken me all these years to learn humility, true humility. And my God in my understanding would not remove these shortcomings or defects until I learned humility and I became a humble person, humble enough to work these steps and, and being humble enough <clears throat> to love and that's what I had to learn in step 7 was before these shortcomings are removed from me I first have to I first have to learn humility, true humility is being humble is to understand yourself is to understand your higher power is to understand why other, pe or other people are thinking, acting, behaving the way they are uh, and accepting through step 1 that we have no power or control and we don't have to think negatively towards them because we already understand them through applying these steps because we now understand, we're coming to understand ourselves and we're beginning to understand a power greater than ourselves and that power lies within us and that was step seven to me is my shortcomings, why I kept reacting to the voice in my head feeding my spirit with negativity, damaging it hurting my body the damage I was doing to my spirit was coming out of my body in aches and pains, diseases, illnesses uh, because of these character defects uh, and the damage I'd done and I noticed this and this is why I had to learn hum true humility that I am no better than anybody else get rid of the grandiosity, the pride, the ego, the arrogance and get a bit of humility into my life uh, but certainly nobody is better than me and I am no better than anybody else because we are all equal uh, and humility is being able to let other people speak I've noticed that uh, that I can do that now and if they want to speak longer let them speak longer just to listen uh, I don't have to speak all the time uh, because uh, that was another negative trait of mine I had to speak all the time and sometimes when people were speaking I would I would cut them off I had no humility and the reason I was cutting them off is because I was frightened I would forget what was already in my mind and I wanted to impress them with this knowledge and wisdom that I had so I would speak it out and cut them off and just to get this out in case I forgot it uh, and people would take offence to that and then I would take offence to them taking offence to that because I didn't trust myself that to listen to a person is to be absent of all thoughts altogether be absent of all thoughts so that you can listen and understand the pain and the message this person's portraying to you so that you can help them and support them better and I've seen that in step 7 the true humility uh, has to be earned the same as a lot of things have to be earned in life and, and when I became humble and, I, and asked can you teach me to be humble and through reading other books and spiritual books and listening to other people I learned what true humility is and that's when I was showing and all these things were revealed the defects and the shortcomings were revealed and working alongside my higher power I started cleansing my soul and I learned a bit of humility and that's what step seven was for me, was I had to learn humility first before these shortcomings would be removed. Then I went on to step eight, my friends, and step eight was made a list of all the persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them. That was a difficult one. Made a list of all the people that I had harmed and became willing to make amends to them. So the bit for the, me there was willingness, uh, to become willing, doesn't say right away 
you have to for forgive these people, you have to make your amends right away and you have to do this and it'll be you. No, no, it's understanding that step. First of all, making a list. I'd harmed thousands of people. Uh, but what I did do was I made a list of all the ones that I could, I could... It was in my mind at the time, all the ones that I could remember. Some had passed away, so I prayed for them, the ones that I couldn't make amends to. I prayed to them through the spirit and through the mind, and I felt uh, that connection and that forgiveness. Uh, and other, other people, I'd made a list of all the people, family, friends. But I put myself at the top. I'd learned to do that. Uh, forgive myself. Uh, learn to forgive yourself first. Uh, and make amends with your soul, your spirit, uh, and the God of your understanding. <clears throat> and then make these amends, and then write down the list of all the people you want to make amends to. But don't just rush out and do it. Take your time. Your higher power, the God of your understanding, uh, will bring these people to you throughout your life. We don't have to do it right away. With some people who maybe in foreign countries, we can't. Sometimes I would write a letter. But when I was ready, when I was spiritually well, the other times I'd done it wrong. I waited this time, it was years and years. Uh, there were some people, till I was, <coughs> my mindset had changed and I knew why I was doing what I was doing, why I was making the amends. And it was to, <coughs> to do the right spiritual thing because of the way I treated other people through my illness of the mind, my dysfunctional behaviour. And that was a great step for me, uh, but the humility had already been there in, in step seven, so it helped me in step eight to, to make that a list of all these people I'd harmed, and I started making my amends. Uh, some people were offended, uh, and I had to accept that and just pray, uh, and pray for them, uh, but not be offended. I understood them. Why? Because some people, uh, through my learned behaviours, had done a lot of damage to a lot of people. I was a very angry and aggressive person when I couldn't get my own way. So I was aware of this this time round in, in step eight and, and it, but it helped me just becoming willing uh, to make my amends and, and do what was right uh, for my spirit and, and to hopefully make amends to other people. And that's all I ask you in step eight is uh, become willing to make your amends. Uh, and, and, and it's a really great, great, great step. You know, it's, it's a humbling step, it's a, it's a clearing step for me, uh, it's clearing out the wreckage of my past, uh, the fear, uh, the shame and the guilt for what I'd done in my past to other people. So I, I'd made that and entrusted that power was with me and working through me and beside me at all times and, and it helped me immensely. And then I came to step nine, made direct amends to such people, except when to do so would injure them or others. And that's a step where I had to watch my impatience. I uh, wanted to get out there and make direct amends to the people that I'd already made in the list. And as I mentioned, some of them weren't ready for it. Uh, and I wasn't ready. Uh, some people had done a lot of damage to who resented me because of my behaviours and what I'd done, uh, whether it's through my addiction or, or through my mental health state of mind. So that's a step to be aware of. There's some people who will not accept her or amends uh, and we can't be offended or hurt by that. We have to understand that, that we became willing, we humbled ourselves and we went up and tried to make amends to people uh, but some aren't ready for it and some, some as I said, uh, have passed away in the spirit world uh, where I prayed and, and meditated and, and got that connection and, and made my amends through the spirit because my God knew then that I was humble and so did the friends because when you're in spirit, you don't think the way as you do on earth. So I was okay with that. Other people I'd made amends to accepted it. Uh, it was a great feeling and it, some of them were very humble people that I hadn't seen me for years. But as I mentioned earlier again, I got them understanding and I asked, could I, could I meet these people? And, and that's what happened throughout the years. I'd maybe bump into them, maybe in a bus or in a shop or something. And not just jumping right in there, it's taking my time and speaking and then come finally coming and already having that courage to, to take this risk and make my amends because I had humility and I knew why I was doing it. Because yeah. I hurt these people through my behaviours, although I didn't mean to, yeah, because I was hurting myself. Yeah, and, and a lot of people and friends and family accepted yeah, the amends that I made and it was amazing. 
one or two didn't. Uh, learning from my last experiences of doing the steps of the, the, the wrong way, I became offended and hurt when people wouldn't accept my amends I was trying to make. So this time round, uh, I took my time with it and I accepted it's not everybody's going to do it and that's what the purpose of that step is. Make sure. Yeah. Because we could even offend people even more. We could not be making our amends just to be rid of our shame and our guilt. Some people might not be ready to take our amends. And that's the purpose of that step is, yeah, okay, you're willing in step eight to make them, but in step nine it is making these direct amends is, it could injure other people. So sometimes it's just maybe taking that step back and maybe it's not the right time yeah, and maybe just saying a wee prayer because you already know that the God of your understanding is within you and that's why these spiritual steps came from Ignatius Loyola who was a saint and the power behind these steps are about getting that connection again with the spirit, yeah, the true I am. Yeah, when, when you finally learn to be still you will experience that. Uh, step nine is a great step but be aware that some people might not take our amends and we can only pray uh, as long as <coughs> as long as you're not being hurt and offended because you became willing uh, and through your love and understanding p through the previous steps you'll understand why people uh, are accepting the amends that we're trying to make because they're still hurt, resentful and angry because of the things we said or the things we done but as I said earlier we're not doing them and we're not saying them anymore because we're working these 12 steps so just be aware of step 9 it's no rushing out and and trying to make amends right away because of all the wrongs are done, get rid of the shame and guilt. Yeah, it's not about that. Yeah, it's, it's about taking your time and, and doing it right this time because you're learning to love yourself and love other people. And then moving on to step 10. Step 10 to me is continue to take personal inventory and properly admit when we were wrong. To me that's a a vigilant step, being totally vigilant uh, in my thinking. Some I used to go to bed at night with step ten and, and and look at my day and check my day out and it's it's looking at complacency but also it's a progress step as well where you'll be able to measure your progress uh, because there's no day there really to pat us on the back and see how well you're doing. Your higher power does it all the time but sometimes we don't recognise that. But step 10 is about taking that inventory and looking at your day, and looking at your thinking, looking at your behaviours, looking at your reactions, which you've already recognised in steps 4 and shared them in steps 5, and you've looked at the defects and shortcomings in 6 and 7. Uh, so step 10 is about looking at that day and, <clears throat> and taking that personal inventory and then promptly admitting when you were wrong. That's where the humility has already come in. Uh, you're not frightened to say, I'm oh, sorry, I made a mistake there, I'm sorry, I was wrong to say that, or I shouldn't have said that. Uh, and promptly admitting, because <clears throat> you're now in contact with the divine spirit, uh, the true spirit, the energy, the, the universe, uh, and you've got that connection, so that connection's helping you in step 10 to promptly admit, yes, I'm wrong, because that's where humility comes in. It's not about right or wrong when you live in the spirit world. There is no right or wrong. It's lessons, and if you're willing, honest and open-minded to take these lessons, you won't be hurt. You just say, I'm going to grow through this, and that's what I use step 10 for, is to be vigilant in my thinking, uh, and try to be absent of all thoughts, uh, which I'll get into in the next step. But step 10 is, is being totally aware of yourself, uh, because you've already looked at yourself through the other steps. and taking an inventory at night and, and looking at it a great day and looking at your progress and maybe I, maybe I reacted there but I didn't react for as long as I used to so that's progress or I never reacted there, tremendous progress and that's it or, or else saying well maybe I, I, that wasn't right to say that or I shouldn't have said that but you don't want to live in a world of I should have and I shouldn't have so it's like just practicing, practicing, practicing these steps every single day being aware, quiet in your mind, so that you have no thoughts, and then you will be able to listen to the spirit. So that was step ten: is being vigilant and being aware in my thinking, my acting, and my behaviour each day, and taking an inventory, a spot inventory at times, and looking, checking, and not punishing myself, saying, "Okay, could do that better the next time," and that's continually not punishing yourself anymore. For these steps are about teaching us how to love 
ourselves for the very first time ever. And that's what step 10 was for to me, is to be vigilant, be aware, and take that infantry and promptly admit when I'm wrong, because I was always right and I always wanted to be right. So admitting I was wrong was very, very humbling experience for me. But I have no problem with that today. No problem, that's what sets me free. Uh, as I don't want to be right all the time. It's not about being right, it's about just taking the lessons and, and being still and quiet in my mind. And that's what I got through step 11. It's my favourite step, uh, step 11. Sought through prayer and meditation to improve, to improve uh, the conscious contact of my God. Praying only, only for the knowledge of his will for me and the power to carry that out. Learn to quiet your mind. It's difficult when we've had a racing head. But as I mentioned, we have to practice these steps to the best of our ability, not to give up, not to quit. You can quiet your mind because I ended up in institutions and mental institutions and all sorts of other places because of my thinking. I had two and three voices going on at one time. Step 11, sought through prayer and meditation to improve the conscious contact, that awareness, that true connection, the conscious contact. Praying only for the knowledge of your God's will for you and the power to carry that out. That step alone tells you that you're spirit, that you, you are human, but you're spirit and you're here having a human experience. And being able to quiet your mind and meditate and get into that quiet place, the spirit will speak to you and you will see and hear things you will never see as a human because you're coming back to the innocence of the child and I believe every human being is searching to get back to the innocence of a child where we don't have a care in the world sticks and stones may break our bones, children don't get hurt they throw a tantrum and two minutes later they're back playing with their toys they don't hold resentment a child will look you in the eye and tell you the truth I don't like you eh, or I love you without worrying about your reaction eh, and that's what I believe I was trying to search for my whole life was to go back to that feeling I had, that innocence of a child. And step 11, through prayer and meditation, revealed that to me, the total peace. Yes, I had to practice it every single day for weeks, sitting back and not answering the thoughts back, maybe putting a bit of music on, uh, even practicing a bit of Tai Chi, yoga, just going up the hills and walking, absent of all thoughts, not answering the thoughts back, just eventually they have no power over you eh, because it was our thoughts that made our lives become unmanageable. Eh, the drugs or the drink or whatever we took, eating or, or no eating or, or whatever it was, retail therapy, gambling or whatever it may be, that addiction to me was running away from my responsibility and using the, the drugs and, the, and everything else as a painkiller to take my focus, my mind off of what was really going on in my life, the, the denial. Yeah, that we speak about through step 11 the spirit could only speak in a very very quiet voice a very quiet voice and only when your mind is quiet can you listen to the guidance uh, which you're looking for that, that connection praying for the knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out and sometimes when the spirit speaks to us we don't like the things they're saying uh, because it's, it's the spirit of truth uh, and we don't like the truth we don't like feeling that shame and guilt for the things we've done. You've already felt it. You don't have to continue feeling it. But you'll feel maybe that wee twinge in your stomach and you say, that's okay, that's okay. At least you're showing me now that's something that I maybe missed in my step four and step five. That's okay, I'll go and share it with somebody else, the person that I trust, as I trust in you, uh, the divine spirit, the God of your understanding. And being able to quiet your mind is freedom, f total freedom from the flesh. Uh, where well, you're living truly as a spirit now uh, and it's, a, it's an amazing, amazing step where you can experience, come back to the child again uh, and experience that peace and contentment, serenity and happiness through being able to quiet your mind and listen to the prompting of the spirit and it's an amazing step, an absolutely amazing step uh, in getting that true connection of who you really are for the first time that I am spirit and this is why they're called spiritual steps, is to let you know who you are and, <clears throat> and in seeing through the steps where we disconnected from the spirit, through the learned behaviours we learned as children, 
uh, in our homes and environment. And again, it's not about blaming anymore. Mummy and daddy learnt from their mummy and daddy, and they learnt from their mummy and daddy. Behaviours are passed down from one generation to the next generation. Uh, so it's nobody's fault here. We are the ones that can break the cycle. And this is where these steps is for. So our family, our children, the loved ones can see us. Uh, what we have done with our lives for applying spiritual steps to your life, a programme of change, changing what you learned within your home and environment which you believed to be normal, which destroyed your spirit and, and harmed people around about us because we didn't know how to love. And that's what Step 11 showed me these things, with total peace and contentment and happiness through being able to quiet my mind and, and gaining the wisdom and knowledge through my higher power for the knowledge will be finally turned into wisdom. As it says in the serenity prayer, the wisdom to know the difference between right and wrong, between black and white, between material and spirit. Uh, and step 11 revealed these things to me, uh, praying, doing God's will, which is to love myself and to love other people, because uh, I didn't know how to do that. Uh, but recognising in the steps, through steps four and five, the, uh, and six and seven, the damage that had been done to me, what I'd learned in my home and environment as a child. Step 11 uh, is an amazing, amazing step. Uh, it helps you quiet your mind, helps you listen to the spirit and the prompting of the spirit. Because we have to quiet our mind, that's why that step is very, very important. When you've come in and you've had maybe a stressful day, it's just to sit back, quiet, and share that day and your thoughts with your higher power. Because you've already made a decision in step 3 that you would turn your will and your life over to that power and you believed in step two. So we don't want to come away from that this time. We want to really believe and trust and, and share. I call my higher power my father. I talk to him as a father. Uh, I can still be a child and I talk to him as a father uh, because I trust so much uh, because of what's been revealed to me. And that led us to, to step 12. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, and become examples to other people. Having had a, <clears throat> a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, and that's what I had, I'd missed out, having had a spiritual awakening, because my spirit wasn't awakened because I hadn't applied the steps and hadn't done them right, but this time round, my spirit was awakened because I understand the true spiritual nature of the steps and their purpose and an understanding of them. Uh, and that's where we become examples to other people, through the power of this programme, through the power of these 12 steps, which can be used by anybody throughout the world, not just organisations uh, and fellowships, individuals. There's millions of people who use the 12 steps who haven't got uh, addiction problems like gambling, drugs, alcohol. It's just that <coughs> their lives are unmanageable because of other people. That minds was, I was totally powerless over the other people and I couldn't accept it applying these steps to my life and having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps I can then carry a message to people who are still suffering out there because they saw me suffering, they saw my anger, they saw my fear, they saw my, my grandiosity, my pride, my ego uh, and I'd noticed all these things through these steps and I noticed that the ego is a spiritual word to use uh, in spirituality, the ego is basically when you're identifying with a thought pattern, with the thinking that's coming in and you're identifying and believing in these thoughts that you're telling yourself, which destroys the spirit, and that's the ego. They call it the light or the dark, uh, the conscious, the subconscious, the unconscious mind. Too complicated for me. My mind was too complicated. Uh, I can just keep it very, very simple. Uh, it was a wee voice, a wee chatterbox in my head, the ego, and I identified with these thoughts and believed in these thoughts and I gathered all this evidence in my mind uh, and believed what I was telling myself uh, and it destroyed me. But applying these steps to my life, uh, learning to pray, learning to meditate, learning to understand my higher power, that it was completely different for the, the, the God that I was raised with and no disrespect to anybody. Uh, that is their God, it's, it's not my God, my God is within me, my God is not separate from me, I don't pray up to the sky anymore, he's everywhere, I see his beauty everywhere uh, and I feel it today and that's through applying these 12 spiritual steps and the example I become, became in my son 
who was going down the same path. And the example we came to my mother, which relieved her with a lot of pain. And my father, before he, he passed away, God rest him, and my sister and my friends had saw that applying these steps properly uh, made massive, profound changes in my life. Uh, and I started letting the healing come in because of the damage I'd done to my soul, had come out of my body, uh, and I started the healing process. We started to heal this through the spirit, through being able to see the good in myself, clear the wreckage of my past, uh, and stop struggling, and stop just being a survivor here on this planet. I wanted to live my life to the fullest, because uh, I only get this one chance at it, and whatever days and years I have left, I'm going to live it to the fullest, because the days and years I had before that, before these 12 steps, was uh, horrid, but it's made me the person I am today. It's my strongest, most powerful asset. It's my past, the exact same as my pain. Every bit of pain that I feel uh, tells me I've separated myself from the spirit. And that's what I use pain for today, is my asset. Uh, so I hope, my friends, that I gave you a wee understanding. Uh, I'm not Mr. Perfect. I don't say that's the way the steps should be worked. Uh, that's my understanding of the steps, the spiritual understanding. And I share these videos uh, to try and help other people understand because I know how difficult it is to understand yourself. Uh, but through understanding yourself, we can then understand others. So uh, I just hope and pray that you took something from it. Uh, and I'll speak to you all again soon. Thanks very much for listening. Uh, and peace and love be with you all. Thank you. Bye.